<laughs> There's a vacancy going in Soko Films for a new cameraman. <laughs> right, I'm all rolling. Action! Okay. Oh, oh. So what I want to talk about, ladies and gentlemen, yeah. is the fact that we are seeing BLM and Antifa attacking Christian monuments in the United States of America. Yeah, yeah. Recently, BLM protests have sought to pull down and destroy Christian monuments in the United States. Ooh. Antifa have gone into Christian churches whilst they have been worshipping on a Sunday and disrupting acts of Christian worship. Ooh. Antifa and the BLM protesters set fire to the church across the way from Washington State. Ooh. Monuments and statues honouring Our Lady, Mary, and our Lord Jesus Christ have been defiled by paint and acids. Ooh. And the response of the Catholic bishops yeah. has been pathetic yeah. and muted. Yes. They have been pathetic yes. and muted. That's right. One such example is that a Catholic priest in the state of Indiana has been suspended by his bishop. Why, Bob? Father, Tre Father Ted Rothrock has been suspended by his bishop for writing the following. Go on, Bob. The brutal murder of a black man has sparked a landslide rea of reaction yeah. to the alleged systematic racism in America, the priest wrote. We are being told that the scars of race relations in this country are really unhealed Wounds that continue to fester and putrefy, amputation is required. Reforms must be sweeping and immediate to crush the rising wave of racism that pervades the nation and perverts the body politic. What would the great visionary leaders of the past be contributing to the discussion at this point in time? Would men like Frederick Douglass and the Reverend King both men of deep faith be throwing bombs or even marching in the streets? On the Black Lives Matter movement, yes. the priest asked, do those Black Lives Matter really matter to the community organizers promoting their agenda? Is Antifa concerned with the defeat of fascist right-wing nationalism or more interested in establishment of a left-wing global nationalism. Who are the real racists and the purveyors of hate? The priest continued. You shall know them by their works. They are wolves in wolves clothing, masked thieves and bandits seeking only to devour the life of the poor and profit from the fear of others. They are maggots and parasites at best feeding off the isolation of addiction and broken families and offering to replace any current frustration and anxiety with more misery and great resentment. Black Lives Matter, Antifa and other nefarious acolytes of their persuasion are not the friends or allies we have been led to believe, yeah. Priest Rothrock wrote. Some groups in Carmel immediately protested the priest's message. At this point, I'm going to interject and add my own comments. Why? Because too many Christians are allowing their understanding of politics to be formed by liberal culture rather than by thinking through political issues as Christians working from Christian doctrines and Christian values. Perfect. Uh calling it racist and inappropriate, the article continues, and called for his removal from the parish. Supporters said that the priest had spoken truthfully, with one telling the Indianapolis Star that the priest was referring to organizers of Marxist Black Lives Matter organizations. So he's not talking about the fight against racism, He's talking about the BLM as an organization and the Marxist thugs, the Marxist terrorist group known as Antifa. Yeah. Amid the controversy, in steps the Cook Bishop. Okay. 
Bishop Timothy Doherty yeah. of the Diocese of Lafayette in Indiana issued on June 30th a statement saying, I expect Father Rothrock to issue a clarification about his intended message. I have not known him to depart from the church's teaching in matters of doctrine and social justice. So why, O oh Bishop, did you think that he would now? I'll tell you why, because you're a cook. <laughs> and because you're frightened of criticism. Yeah. And because you're frightened of standing up to anyone about anything. And you think that the way to evangelize the West is to get everybody to like you. Uppercut. Yeah. On the same day, Priest Rothrock posted an apology on the parish website. Wow. It was not my intention to offend anyone. And I am sorry that my words have caused any hurt to anyone. Ooh. It's a shame that he felt he had to apologize yeah. and not just contribute to the debate. The priest's apology said that the gospel condemns bigotry, which it does. The fight against racism is 100% legitimate and a totally Christian affair. According to the Inepulous Star, adding that we must also be fully aware that there are those who would distort the gospel for their own misguided purposes. Like the cook bishops and like the progressive priests who want to turn the church into an NGO for the world rather than understanding that the church is a body politic, a religious community that has its own interests, its own values and its own doctrines and its own history and its own culture to defend and to stand up for. We must also be fully aware that those who would distort the gospel for their own misguided purposes. People are afraid, as I pointed out, rather poorly, I would admit, that there are those who feed on that fear to promote more fear and division. And that is exactly what these worldly politics do. Marxism promotes division and class rivalry. Communism promotes class conflict. Salafism promotes bitterness yeah. and estrangement. It cultivates anger. So does the BLM. They cultivate division, a narrative of injustice leading to conflict. The next day, July 1st, Doherty announced that Rothrock had been suspended from ministry. Father Theodore Rothrock is suspended from public ministry according to Canon 1333. The suspension comes in the wake of Father Rothrock's June 28th bulletin article. So a lifetime of dedication to the Catholic Church and you make one statement that upsets the progressives and the bishop falls over and removes you from your seat. Why does he do it? He did it because a little bit of progressive pressure was applied on him. Brothers and sisters, the church will not convince anyone to take our faith seriously until we as Christians take it seriously ourselves. That means that we as Christians must take our identity as Christians seriously. And so when a group of Marxists and BLM activists desecrate monuments dedicated to our Lord and dedicated to Our Lady, we must call out those groups. Right. We must stand up to those groups. When a group of bunch of Marxists and BLM activists set fire to a church, we must call out those groups. Right. We must stand up to those groups. Yes. When a group of Antifa activists <laughs> enter into a church yes. and disrupt Christian worship inside the church, Ooh. 
We must call out those groups. We must, we must. We must stand up to those groups. Right. And that is what Father Rothrock did. Yeah. Well, Whatever you. faults may have been in his statement, he did the right thing by standing up for the church against groups that are against the church. Yeah. Our Lord Jesus Christ said that if you are not for me, you are against, against me. me. That's right. And how as a Christian can we not be against those who are against our Lord? Oh, you can how can we not side against our Lord, against those who stand against him and the truth of his gospel? This bishop is a cook and a coward. Yes. Yes. And the Bible teaches cowards go to hell. That's right. That's what the Bible teaches. Perfect. Because cowardice means that when evil takes a stand, you don't. Yeah, that's it. When evil takes ground, you let it happen. Yeah. And that is exactly what we're seeing in the West with the bishops who dare not stand up against evil ideologies like Marxism, Islam, Fascism and Nazism. That's right, that's right. If these bishops yeah. can call Christians onto the street to stand up against the alt-right yeah. and against the abortion clinics, then they can call Christians to stand up against the Marxists, the communists, I've got water, and the Salafists and Islamists. Right. Come on, Bob. Come on, Bob. But how should we consider such bishops? Oh, Bob, tell us, Bob. They are the surrender monkeys of the church. <laughs> surrender monkeys? They are the cowards of the church. They are the ones who would allow the church to be persecuted because they don't want to have any conflict. They are the ones who are silent about our brothers and sisters in Nigeria who are being butchered yeah. Yeah. by the thousand. That's right, yes. They are the ones who are silent about the Christians in Pakistan who are having their bombs, their churches bombed. That's right, yes. They are the ones who are silent about the Christians in Egypt being attacked in anti-Christian pogroms. They are the ones who are not calling for the regime in North Korea to be toppled, even though it is singularly the worst persecutor of Christians in the entire world. Tell him, Bob, tell him. They are the ones who do not stand up for the Christians in Burma, the Karen, who are fighting against a military bu Buddhist junta who are persecuting Christians there. They are the ones who don't stand up against Hidutva in India that persecutes Christians. Yeah. And why? Why do these bishops be so silent? Why, Bob? Because they want to get along with the liberal progressive establishment. Ooh. They want to be liked by the celebrities. <laughs> they want to be liked by the politicians and get invited to the top tables. Ooh, they it. want to make Christianity look like it fits into liberal progressive culture. Tell him, Bob, tell him. Ladies and gentlemen, Tell's Tell's they, ladies and gentlemen, Tell's are Tell's the Judases of the church. They are the ones who betray our Lord for 30 pieces of silver. Let's just find the passage. Because I don't think that it is by accident that it was Judas, an apostle of Christ, one of the first bishops to which every bishop is a successor was the one who betrayed our Lord. I don't think that's an accident. Because... Bloodfire, don't feed the trolls. Don't feed them. 
literally. Today he is, yeah. Don't feed the troll. I'm just saying, like, 14 pieces is just like, a pretty decent amount of money. Oh, he's a hater, he's a hater. Oh, no, to kill a guy who's immortal. So what don't, the he's a hater. Jesus came Bro, back to life anyway. Don't get him fired. <laughs> I want to find the passage about Judas did the very thing Jesus wanted him to do. <laughs> so really, he didn't really betray Jesus because he just wanted to be crucified. So, Judas himself. What did he say, Bob? Judas, then one of the twelve named Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, What are you willing to give me? to betray him to you wow. and they weighed out 30 pieces of silver to him and from then on he began looking for a good opportunity to betray Jesus Ooh. now on the first day of unleavened bread the disciples came to Jesus and asked where do you want us to prepare for you to eat the Passover and we know the story from there they took silver to betray our Lord bishops who are willing to betray the cause of the church because they want to get on with the culture they are the ones love fire can you take the conversation they are the ones who want to betray the church and for what reason so that they can have their benefits <laughs> So the German bishops betray the church because they receive the church tax from the state. Yeah. End the church money, tax money. in Germany. The American bishops betray the church because they don't want martyrdom. Ah. They don't want persecution. Ah, okay. Jesus promised us persecution yeah. for following in his way. Indeed, indeed, that's right. He said that they would malign us. Yep. He said that they would persecute us, speak evil against Inside. us, and would kill us in the name of God. Perfect. Yeah, he say that. They said that they would put us on trial. In jail. But the bishops don't want any of that. Ooh, cowards! And so they are willing cowards. to betray the cause of the church so that there is no trouble, Ooh. no conflict. Ooh. But Jesus said, I have come not to bring peace but a sword yeah. to turn daughter against mother to turn son against father to turn brother against brother for he who chooses the world more than me he who chooses his own family more than me is not worthy of me yeah. Christ said what does it profit a man if he is to gain the entire world but to lose his own soul. And the bishops are exchanging their soul for the world. Yeah, for money. They have abandoned the faith. And what should we do about these bishops or Christians? Tell us, Bob. What can we do about these heretics? Get rid of them. Who seek to worship the culture rather than be disciples of Jesus Christ? What can we do with the Cardinals and the Archbishop of York and the Archbishop of Canterbury? Kick them in the ass. Withhold your money. Yeah, no Withhold money. your support. No money. Don't support their initiatives. Don't go to their events. Don't give to their causes. Don't give in the parish plate. Starve them of cash. That's right. But don't do it in secret. Uh. Tell them that you're doing it and tell them why you're doing it. Yeah. Tell them why you're boycotting them. Yeah. Tell them why you're having nothing to do with them. Right, because they crucified your Lord when they allowed the church to be persecuted and did not rally the church. Ooh. Support bishops who stand up for the church. Support bishops who stand up for the Christian community. Support bishops who stand up for Christian doctrine. Support bishops who stand up for Christian values. Amen, amen. Give your allegiance to those bishops and abandon the bishops who have abandoned the faith or the culture. Yeah. Give your allegiance to God. Furthermore, exactly, to love your Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, and with all your strength. Amen. 
is what we're called to do. Amen, amen. Not submit amen. to a bishop who doesn't care about the faith. Only the money. Christians, we need the good priests to get into the episcope. The episcope. One of the problems why bad bishops end up being in the episcope yeah. is because they're crap at being a priest and the good priests who are good at being a priest don't want to leave their parish. Ah. I would say to those good priests, yeah. take the hit for the good of the church. I know you're enjoying your job, your vocation as a parish priest, but if you have the opportunity to become a bishop, take it and then use your authority to outmaneuver the cultural bishops who are seeking to turn the church simply into an NGO. Uh. I appeal within the Anglican Communion for the Global South in Gafcon to go to the Lambeth Conference. You will simply outnumber the heretical bishops, take over the agenda of the Anglican Communion fight for the Anglican Communion, you outnumber them. The Nigerian church alone is bigger than the Church of England. That's because they're Christian. Furthermore, brother, I appeal to the Inquisition. I appeal to the Inquisition to go and address heretical bishops in Germany and America, to bring them to heel or to defrock them and to stop bishops who are compromising on the faith. We need an inquisition within the Church of England. Christians, work together against the heretical bishops. Yeah. Organize yourselves, train yourselves, unite yourselves, mobilize yourselves and resist. We cannot allow things to continue as they are. Don't betray our Lord for 30 pieces of silver. Amen. Beware of the sheep. Beware of the wolves in sheep's clothing. Uh, any questions? Any questions? I think Bansi had a question before. Any questions? Now's your chance. Now's your chance. Go. I made a statement. I made a statement. I didn't ask a question. I made a statement. What's the statement again? I say the people who subscribe to uh, to the modern Christianity, yeah. they're not buffoons. They're buffoons. Especially because he said the Nigerians. I'm talking about the Nigerians. Yeah. The Nigerians should subscribe to their traditional spiritual systems. Okay. Not the nonsensical knowledge, uh, 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 a form of Christianity, even though from inception Christianity is an African uh, 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 theological concept anyway. Uh, uh, the Nigerians should subscribe to their ancestors' uh, uh, original uh, uh, story. That's what they should do. So, you know, let me let me read that nonsense from the the, the the white man. Okay, good. Go on, Bob. So the reply to this brother's comment is this. Yeah. Firstly, if you aspire or follow a weak liberal kind of Christianity as practiced in Northern Europe, yeah. the brother is right. You're a fool. Yeah. Because that's not what Jesus called you to. But luckily for me, the Nigerian Christians don't follow the wish-wash of the Archbishop of Canterbury. Right. There is more leadership in the Anglican Communion coming from the bishops of Nigeria than there is coming from the Archbishop of Canterbury or York. Perfect. One of the best cardinals in the Vatican is an African cardinal, Cardinal Sara, oh, yeah. as opposed to the European cardinals. Christianity is an African religion. The Coptic Church was founded at exactly the same time as the European Church. The Coptic Church is indigenous to Africa. We Christians in Europe adopted an African language as our mother tongue. Latin originated in North Africa. We Africanized the linguistics of Europe. Why? Because as Christians, we are not like Islam. We don't do Arabization. <laughs> All the different ethnicities bring beauty into the church, whether they're African or European. And African theologians like Clement of Alexandria or Augustine of Hippo or Saint Anthony, who founded the monastic systems, contributed to European Christianity. We're not interested in pride statements like saying, it's African. No, my friend. 
It's Christian. And Christianity has fertilized the spirituality of Africa just as it has fertilized the spirituality of Europe. And that is exactly what the church is meant to do. Perfect. Not like certain other 7th century imperialist religions that I could mention that insist that you bow to an Arab city, take an Arab name, worship God in Arabic, read an Arabic book, go to an Arab city, imitate an Arab man, and then whilst you're doing that, yeah. we'll take your children as slaves anyway. Ooh. Ooh. No, this brother's got a, sorry, this brother's got a question. Bishop Vigano is saying that the liberalisation and the decline of faith in Europe, the liberalisation and the decline of faith in Europe is caused through Vatican II and the implication of or the Vatican II has brought into the church. Is it time to move away from Vatican II and go back to the traditional traditional way of worship that the church had prior to Vatican II? Okay, so the brother's asking me to comment on something that's specifically Roman Catholic. I am not a Roman Catholic. So, but my view is, I think actually that the Vatican II, my personal view, as an outsider that doesn't have much beef in this fight, my personal view is that those things that anchor traditional Christian values and doctrines are the things that need to be upheld. I think the problem with Vatican II is not what with what it aspired to be or to do, but with the way that it has been abused by people. In a way that it has emphasized the idea of some kind of reconciliation between the Christian church, particularly the Catholic church, and the rest of humanity based upon a common humanity. That's the problem. Christians believe in a unique way of being human. That is what we need to emphasize our religion of difference, not a common religion of humanity, because common religions of humanity are eaten by the religions of difference, which is why the Catholic Church in particular is losing people left, right and center to every other group. It doesn't stand for anything. Next question. There's Christianity, there's Christianity or there's Christians, or the, uh, does the Christians ever own any slaves? Yeah, I'm talking, in the past I'm that's what I'm talking about. So that's what I'm saying that when it comes to that, when it comes to the African way of thinking, we should abstain from their way of doing things and follow our way of doing things. It's not about division or anything. I, we, I'm, I'm, I'm saying like we have to be ourselves because when we try to join you guys, it seems like a, you want to take over and that's what I'm saying. Can I reply to that? And which is wrong, you Can know, from your point of view. Let Historically, it's been proven that you always, every time when you go to somebody's land, you just want to take over. You want to take over things. That's not, and, and now you're talking about humanity. What humanity are you talking let, let, about? Let me reply to that. Because the brother doesn't understand how Christianity works. Christianity is an African religion. It was founded in Africa at exactly the same time as European Christianity. So Africa is in, Christianity is indigenous to Africa. Africans contributed to the church. In the church, there isn't an African and a European. There is only a Christian. And in that confederacy of ethnicities and nations, Christians come together and we each bring the best of our own culture. Christians have a history with slavery. That is true. But our example is Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ in a time when no one would have battered an eyelid about him having a slave, never owned a single slave. He is our example. He never owned a slave. And so, if you understood the history of the church, you would see that from the very beginning, Christians were setting slaves free. Many of our saints set slaves free. They instructed us to set slaves free. Let me give you some examples. Saint Augustine said that slavery was because of sin. So he identifies slavery as being sinful. Saint John Christosom said, buy a slave, teach him a trade, set them free. He created an economy just like that. Christians, I can't remember their name, I think, I can't remember his name. There were, there's been Christians who have sold themselves into slavery in the Roman period and then used the money 
to set people free. Christians set entire religious orders up to go into the Islamic slave trade and buy slaves and set them free. Christians have consistently been battling against slavery. Yes, we've had our failings, but our example is Jesus. Success. That's the point I'm making. The point I'm making is that there was more failures than success. No, and you're wrong. that shouldn't be the case. No, you got that wrong. You know, I got it right. I got it right, and the proof is there. The proof is there. Brother, you know, brother, so what, what we're what, trying what to say that to it's forgotten. wrong, it's wrong that the, 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 the Christians go around the world raping and pillaging, you know, uh, from the whole world. That's wrong. So let me, let me reply to that, brother. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Brother, let me reply to that. The brother basically said that, that Christians did more wrong than right. Okay. But he, and he's appealing to Africans to stay in their traditional beliefs. But I would say, firstly, there's no such thing as an African identity. That is a new thing. It is being created by Western media. Africans had tribal identities. And the ones who were complicit in the European slave trade were Arab Muslims and African tribes. They would sell one another into slavery. So the problem isn't that people have done slavery, because we've all done it. Everyone has done it. Everybody has done it. No, the the point that, is, that, that, that certain people did it to others. The worst slave traders were the Arab Muslims. No, they, their slave. No, they, they, well, to a certain degree, because they started it. They started it, and the Christian finished it. That's we, the yeah, point. we did finish it, yeah. but the Islamic slave so trade is still you, going both, on. So both of you were Where wrong. can you buy a black That's child right. today as a slave? In a place like Libya. Cartoon. Today, in 2020, yeah, where you can, can you do buy a that, black slave? unfortunately. Where can you? In Sudan. Yeah, well, there you go. Which is an Islamic republic. Yes, that's there what you I'm go. saying. That's what I'm saying. The whole tell me, thing tell is me wrong. where people... So how we go Chad, about changing Chad, that? Chad, how do we change Chad, yeah. that narrative? Chad, how do we Chad. change it? How do we change it? You see, the, no, the, Christian, brother, brother. the Christians, they're good at talking. We stop slavery. What are they doing to change We've that? We've made slavery illegal. Are you unaware, brother, that we have made slavery illegal? In the book. Yes. No, it is illegal. If you own a, there are people. Why did you make slavery illegal? Also gave them more citizenship. This is really important thing yes, that people don't you. say. It's you gave really, them really citizenship. Important. Yes. Who gives you the right really, to really give really somebody a citizenship? You. Who's yeah. you just to recently, give somebody a citizenship? Just read. He's not. He's not listening anymore. Yeah, yeah. But I'll talk to everyone else. Go on, Bob. I'll talk to everyone else. Go on, Bob. Ladies and gentlemen, Go on. the brother said. How do we make it better? Yeah, he said that. Well, I'll tell you how we make it better. Oh, Bob. We follow the examples of Christian saints, yeah. Christian kings, yeah. who made slavery illegal in the 13th century. We follow the example of Christians like William Wilberforce, who fought endlessly to end slavery in the British Empire. Yeah. It was European powers that forced the Barbary pirates who were taking slaves to end their slavery. And how did we do it? We bombed them into submission. That's how we did it. This is wrong. We, so you'd that rather slavery wrong. continue? Oh, These okay. two would seem to think slavery should continue. Which is wrong. Okay. They talked about making slavery better. Yeah, yeah. How do we stop it? Yeah. We Christians already did. It's time for the Muslim Arab world to catch up. Yeah. It's time for places in Africa to catch up. Yeah. It's time for China to That's catch right, up. Right. It's time for India to catch That's up. Right. Yeah. It's time for Dubai to catch That's up. Right. Yeah. It's time for Qatar to catch up. Yeah. It's time for Saudi Arabia to <laughs> catch up. Yeah. We don't need to take lectures. We need to give lectures. That's right. And people need to be me, humble enough me, to me, see me, which is better. Perfect. You see, the narrative is beautiful, but the practicality, they're not doing it. They're very good at talking, but they're not doing what they're saying they're doing. It's already law. No, it's already in law. The law is not followed. It it's is not followed. followed. If someone owns a slave, they're prosecuted. Yeah. Yeah. There's people out there. Forget in the past. Today, China is capturing the whole European country. Sorry? China, forget the past. Forget the past. But today, China will capture the whole European country. What's your point? That this is what I'm telling you. That's off topic. <laughs> this is one of the <laughs> best Point is, is it Catholic Christianity yeah, or what? So Christianity. 
Christianity, and I want to show you why. Let me explain. It's an oppressive religion. It's an oppressive religion. And it's done more to free slavery than any other belief system on earth. And here's why it did. Because if we go to the very first story in Genesis, in the very first chapter, he says they're all the same. Here's what it says. Because it doesn't say this in Islam. Okay. And it doesn't say this in Buddhism. Okay. And it doesn't say this in Hinduism. All right. But here's what it says. Bob, Bob. In verse 26, Genesis chapter 1, then God said, Let us make man in our image according to our likeness, and let them rule over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the sky, and over the cattle, and over the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. That means that every human being has exactly the same innate dignity. dignity. And that means that that dignity is not connected to your religion, to your riches, to your status in society, whether you're black, whether you're white, Nothing. Nothing. It's given to you by God. And that is why for 2,000 years we can find consistent examples of Christians fighting against slavery, whilst by contrast Islam permitted slavery for 1,400 years and has never had an emancipation movement. Never. Any questions? It was Christians who taught Africans Please no, I said Christians who taught Africans to abandon the slave system. When we learned to abandon it ourselves. So what took you so long to, to abandon it? What took you 400 years plus? You got it wrong again. Okay. What, what took you all that time to come to your, your, your senses that, oh, hold on, we've, we've been in, you've been looking at these people. What is that? That's not caught up with us then yet, mate. What took you so long? Why is this brother yeah, yeah, yeah. attacking so me as a Christian yeah, yeah. who's against slavery yeah. when that you. Muslim there yeah. will defend slavery? I'm not attacking you. I'm not attacking you. Why? Yeah. 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 I want to ask all all I'm people yeah. 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 who buy question. into this my, narrative. My question is this: no, no, What took you 400 years plus to realize? that what you were doing was wrong. Let me ask you, let me answer. Let me answer. I'll answer him. Go on, Bob. The brother doesn't know history. <laughs> he doesn't know history at all. Let me just catch him up. All right. The Christians stopped the slave trade in the Roman Empire in the 5th century. That's two centuries before Islam. Christians stopped slavery in England in 1068. Okay. Is there stop it? What happened? Hey, brother! 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 Listen! Brother! Brother! Brother, right? if I'm wrong, yeah. fact check me. Fact check, fact check. Fact check me. Fact check. Okay. Anyone who thinks I'm wrong. No, brother, let me finish the answer. Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. The point is that you have too simplistic a narrative of history. You think that it's just one continuous thing all the way through. When actually, if you look at the Christians and how they've engaged with slavery over 2,000 years, there has been a consistent struggle that has sometimes been against slavery and sometimes gone in favour of slavery over that 2,000 years. European slave trade, which incidentally was because of the brutalisation of the Islamic slave trade, was an example of, of, of the Europeans doing slavery and it goes that way. However, however, what all of these liberationist groups and black identitarians go on to talk about is European slave trades that we Christians stopped 1700 in the 1700s. But they're silent about Africans being enslaved 
today by Arab Muslims. They're being enslaved now as we talk about it, as he tells me about why this and why that. Why aren't the black identitarians standing up against the Arab slaves? What is it? I will. What is it that took 400 years plus? I'm talking about in, including uh, colonialism and every, all the form of discrimination. Of discrimination. What took you so long to realize that? Hold on, what I'm doing to my fellow human being is wrong. What took you so long? I will say it again because you didn't listen the first time. I did, I heard no, you, you didn't. Say, you said that. I will say it again no, no, no. because you didn't listen the I heard first what time. You're saying by you. Listen, let me say it what again. What are you doing? You're moving the Brother, goal post. I haven't you even tried spoke to yet. If I'm saying exactly the same thing, how am I moving the goal no, post? No, what I'm saying is this. What I'm saying is this. I'm saying I'm going to. Let me no, tell you how. No, let me. What are you trying to do? Bro, you try to attribute slave bro, to, 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 to only the Muslims. Bro, yes. The Muslims did it first, no. but you did it too. So both no. of you were wrong. The question and it's time that you to both of you repent. The question that's, that you, that's my point. And he's not listening, I'll say it again. We have repented. We have made slavery illegal. No, according and to like your Islam. actions. The action speaks louder he than listen. words. He doesn't listen. The this is an example no. of a brother who interprets the facts. According say, to oh, feelings, you can make a yeah. say because oh, I feel that you. something is true, therefore it is true. Ah, okay. Regardless of what the facts are, the fact of the matter is that even during the colonial period, Christians were fighting against the slave trade. Go and look up the Franciscans and the Dominicans. They were fighting against colonial slavery. They were fighting against the abuses of the slave Europeans. Christians have always listened. Listen. Listen. What took you 400 years to realize that? Why you were doing to your ease, your people? No, no, what took you so long? That's what we answered. We have always been fighting against it for 2,000 years, and sometimes we have succeeded, and sometimes we have failed. And that's the truth. But here's the thing to all of you guys that are going on about the European slavery of the past. Why are you not calling out the Arab slavery of today? I agree with that. I agree with that. No, it's not answer. Well, I'm saying I agree. I agree. I agree. I agree. I agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. Hold on. Hold on. Now. You need to listen now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What? I agree. You know, on the on the sense that. Uh, uh, when it comes to the slave trade, the Arabs started first, that's true. And then the and Christians, hold on, it. hold on, I'm speaking now. The Arabs started and he's still doing it. Yes. And, and, and my point is this, both of you were wrong to, 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 to have slavery. And what, we need, you. what you need to do perhaps... But we a, have hold on, no, hold on, what you need to do perhaps is to uh, find a way to pay for that, what, that damage. We have the damage that you caused to the people. We because have repented. The repenting, repenting. Bro, I will anything. take I will take claims about compensation action, more seriously action. when you take stir action. up against Arab slavery. Yeah. 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 I'm not yeah. interested. Yeah. I'm not interested. I agree. With, I agree. When, when I agree with that. I agree. But what oh, we okay. need to do is to organize and then uh, uh, pay for those. No, I'll do, we'll we'll deal with compensation yeah. claims later. <laughs> For the moment, no, yeah. let's stop the Islamic slave trade today. I agree with right. you. I totally agree. I totally agree. Let's we end, need to do, let's we need to end to stop all let's forms of end the slavery uh, in China. Let's end the slavery in North Korea. Yeah. Let's deal with the human trafficking. That's right. Let's deal with the human trafficking uh, yeah. that the liberal progressives are facilitating because of their policies on immigration. The fact that they are facilitating human trafficking gangs, our governments are complicit in human trafficking because they won't stand up to the gangs that are doing it. Yes, but the point I'm making is this. Anyway, brother, I'm going to do another talk. That's right. The point I'm making is this. When it comes to when it comes to this thing, see, it's very easy for you to give me a, a, a paper to say, look, I free you. But when your actions contradict what you're saying, I will still have a problem with that. I, I want to tell you, bro. Your actions. I, I want to tell you, bro. You say, like, bro, oh, I free you. Bro, there you go. Bro, 
But I want to tell you something. It's crazy. I, I, as a Christian, as a Christian, I, I am not going to be held to some false sense of shame about something that we Christians addressed 300 years ago that I am not personally responsible for. I have never owned a slave. I do not own any slaves, nor do I support slavery. So I'm not going to be have some sense of shame put on me. I'm you and that. everyone and who agrees with your narrative no, 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 no. needs to tackle idea. the slavery no, no, that on. exists that's today. That's not my yeah, idea, yeah, no, yeah, no, no, my intention. But what I'm saying, you, supposedly, your granddad came and took a piece of gold of me. It's and today illegal. you still have that piece of gold. It's illegal, only right bro. that you give it back. Bro, there's a problem it's with that. It's only right that you give it back. There's a problem you with that. Why? Because of the way you took it. There's a problem with that. Because the if, where, where's the cut-off point? The cut-off point is this. You need to pay for the damage that you've done. No, no, then no. no. Where's be, the cut-off point? There'll be peace and harmony. No, because as they, long as, as long as, everybody, see, everybody has, everybody has historical problems that they can appeal to. Otherwise, you subjugated the whole human race no. to, a, to, a, to, a, to, a, to a point of hating each other. No, bro. That hate is You're created. trying to blame all the world's How? problems no, no, on no. slavery. It doesn't work no, no. like that. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. I'm trying to blame the problem on the people. Specific people, I will not take, all white people. I I'm can't take your argument seriously. I'm saying those particular people I can't take who did wrong seriously. are on companies. Go on out there and pay compensations to the people who needed them all. I can't take then your argument seriously. I'm not saying that all white people are bad, all white people are I can't slave. take your argument that. seriously. I'm saying the people who did that should go around and pay. I can't take your argument seriously. You don't have to. Go and tackle the existing you know, you slave trade today. You don't have yeah, to because yeah, yeah, yeah. you are biased. You don't have to take me out. Yeah. I can't yeah, because yeah, you're yeah, standing you here attacking me for something that my people, the church, has repented for when there are Muslims in this very place I'm not who will you, defend sir. slavery because Islam teaches slavery. I'm not attacking you, sir. We have what you need to do. You ask me a question. Sir, what you I'm need to do, your question. What you need to do is take your commitment to justice seriously to do. and stand with Christians against the Arab slave trade. I will abstain. That's I what mean, you need to do. I would never follow. You need Christian. to stand with Christians against the Arab slave trade. No, no, no. Oh, I need to stand the against Islamic the Islamic slave trade. I, I, I need to stand against Christians and I need to stand against the Arab slave trade as well. That's it. There is no Christian slave trade today. Yes, they, they, they did and they benefit from it. That's Where is the Christian slave trade today? Well, today there might be some somewhere out there. Uh, there's no there might be some slave. somewhere out there. Listen, listen, I can listen, tell listen. you where you can buy a black child as a slave today okay. in Sudan. You say that on the present day in Africa, in Chad, for the in Malawi, you try in to these out. places. There, leave me out. You can buy slaves today. You try to blame you the Arabs, but you need to with take Christians. As well. You need to stand as with Christian. Christians. Christians no, I don't. It's true. It's true. But it's I'm happening here. right now as he talks saying. about it. Yeah. But he wants to talk about a slavery no, that we've repented for. No, we He's not calling the, is the Muslims to repentance. Nothing. He's not standing with the Christians no, against the Islamic slavery. No, you're trade. lying right there because I agree with you when you said that we all should stand against slavery. Right. Whether Christian slavery or Muslim slavery. So that means or you need to stand with us against Islam. No, yeah. I don't have to stand. I'm with you. And on that note, I don't have to stand with you. I'm going to stand with the real ones. Thank you, thank you, bro. Have a good day. No, 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 no. Oh, why? I don't shake hands. Why? Because you don't have a situation and stuff like that. Elbow, elbow, elbow. Okay, no worries. Okay, thank you. Thank you, bro.